Thank you for returning to our series on Autodesk Inventor for Architectural Fabrication. My name is Steve Whittem of Whittem Associates. One of the primary tasks of all users is the need to create libraries of components for reuse. It's normal for designers to have hundreds and possibly thousands of items that need to be created. Then once created, develop multiple configurations for their reuse. Utilizing iLogic internal to Inventor, one can easily create several sub-assemblies that will have the ability to be reused in infinite configurations, thus freeing the designer to do what they do best, which is design. When we take a look at a project, I use that same paradigm of top-level assembly, which is the room, and the sub-assemblies, which are the furniture, the, the molding, the millwork, the doorways, the windows. And I'm hoping to show you today how easy this can be related to the application of using Inventor for the architectural fabrication environment. We'll start off with a simple piece of furniture that I've put together uh, that has several dovetail drawers, but I'm missing all the doors associated with it. So now I need that ability to create doors. So what I've done is I've inserted and placed a door that already existed in my library, but it had some iLogic interface already associated with it. If we look at it closely, it is multiple parts that have been associated together. It's coped in stick. It has rails and styles. The panel is separate, so thusly I have parts lists, bill of material, and cut lists from this immediately. But the one thing that I did with this door is that I've developed an iLogic interface, which is internal to Inventor. And it's a very simple programming language where you don't need any programming skills. And maybe it's 30, 40 lines of code, very easily done, that is associated to that door. So what I've done is I've set up hinge selection, panel selection, what the door edge should look like what the width and the length of the door should be and then if sh then if sh it should have a middle rail or not a middle rail so once I trigger this I can quickly say that the door should have a raised panel it should be a quarter round edge and the door itself should be a size that's 15 by 22 with no center rail obviously I can type it anything I want for width and length and immediately it adjusts and I don't have to really do anything other than fill in information. And then if it's not what I want and I want a center rail, I say yes, I want a center rail centered in the door and it breaks the panel into two separate panels and then again I say maybe I don't want it centered, I want it 10 inches from the bottom of the door and immediately and a, oh, flat panel too, and immediately it generates that flat panel and moves the rail down. I want to go down a little further so we'll say not 10 but 8 inches and again it adjusts it. Again no operator intervention really, no um, thinking about sketching, just fill in some information. So now what I'll do is I'll say that the there is no middle rail but it's 40 and a half inches long and it's 10 inches wide. Now, based on my rule set, I told the system that any door over 40 inches should get a third hinge. And if you notice that, we now have three hinges. We, if we go to 60 inches, it'll have four hinges. Again, I don't have to be concerned with missing it, forgetting it, adjusting it. It's not centered properly. It's all being done for me. And then finally, this is a European hinge, so I just pick a different type of hinge. It drills the actual rail of the door and places the hinge. Infinite configurations of a door or a series of doors. Now, last step in the process is I want to take the door and I want to size it to fit the cabinet. So I take a dimension of the cabinet, I click on the door, I trigger it, and I type in the width and the length of the opening minus whatever the clearance I want around the door and hit OK and it adjusts. Using normal 3D constraints in Inventor, we'll place the door, we'll copy it and put the second door and take a look at this from the front view to check our clearances. 
Now, clearances look real good, but maybe this should have been a raised panel door. So even in the top level assembly, we have the ability to change it at any time and go from a flat panel to a raised panel door. We also have the ability to do any of the other dialog changes that we have programmed into the system. So we want a center rail. Center rail divides the door, changes the cut list, bill of material. And then finally, if we want to change the edge condition, we have that ability also. Again, allowing us to free ourselves up to design, hopefully get a better quality image, better quality product to our end user. And then finally, we'll do an OG edge. Well, I hope that this um, showed you the, some of the capability of the tool. Um, it is very dynamic, very easy to use. Again, my name is Steve Whittem at Whittem Associates.